Hey, what's up, Crypto Army? I'm Travis, your crypto newbie, bringing you my experiences so you don't have to learn things the hard way. Just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor and none of my content should be viewed as financial advice. If you like what my content offers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and turn on notifications to get notified when I publish new content. It really helps the channel grow and get the content to others that might like it. So today we're going to do a quick recap of the AMA for Evergrow Coin, everybody's favorite token. A lot of good information at the AMA today. Some of it is repeat some of it is just kind of some quick updates it was about an hour long the initial update was maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then just quite a few questions and in the questions they added some more information as well now on the full ama i have gone through and done an update on that so it's got a table of contents to help you navigate through just keep in mind that there's a lot of questions and i don't necessarily put information for each of the questions so you might miss some information that you were looking for if you don't watch the entire thing and I'm not going to hit every single one of the questions in here either, but I'm going to cover a lot of the big information that was pushed out today. So first up, as you can see on your screen right now, is Craters up and running. How do you get here? So let's back up and we'll go back to the Evergrow website. So on the website, if you scroll down, all you do is click the subscription platform beta and that will open this up. And one of the things one of the people in the live stream today asked a question about fees. They do have the fee information here. They spent quite a bit of time talking about fees in the AMA as they did last week. So if you've got questions about fees, this would be a good place to go take a look at it. The big thing here is when you subscribe or when you decide to give tips to these content creators, if you do a transfer in Evergrow coin, yes, there's going to be a 14% fee. Now, what they're trying to do is make it so you've got lots of options. So if you want to give them a, a tip in your debit card or PayPal, that'll be an option for you as well. That way you're not losing that 14%. Similarly, if the content creator accepts Evergrow coin, there's no commissions. And I think I covered this last week. If they decide that they want to collect their commissions in some other options such as you know stable coin or a different crypto or anything other than evergo coin they're going to pay a five percent commission now here's the thing that they emphasize repeatedly throughout the course of this ama this is going to be one of the things that gives evergo coin some utility moving forward all of these things everything goes back into buyback and burn so the five percent commissions for example they will use that five percent commission to go buy evergo coin and then burn it which means price goes up because you bought and price goes up again because you burned because you've reduced the supply that's out there. So this is a, and it's the same thing as every other buyback and burn that we've been talking about. It has the same effect. And Sam went through a little bit of a, an explanation of what that means volume wise. Potentially they could be burning 1% of the total supply every month, depending on the volume or more. I mean, he used, uh, I think he used 10 million, if I remember correctly, in volume, which is definitely possible nfts and content creators tend to are, are kind of the big thing right now i mean it was on 60 minutes uh, a couple months ago but they did an in-depth review of nfts in the growing space it, it's it's on fire in 2021 and it's projected to be even bigger moving forward they're going to be competitive with a lot of other stuff that's out there. So OnlyFans is one of them that keeps getting mentioned because I know that's really popular. So yes, it'll be open up to content creators that would also be on, on that particular platform. They're also gonna have live stream capability for both paid and unpaid live stream capability. So there's gonna be a lot of options built into this and it's got a lot of potential, which means more volume and more burn which means higher prices and potentially more rewards. So just keep that in mind. This is all good utility for the Evergrow coin to build up your rewards and the value of your investment at this point. Kind of a big update on exchanges. So Indicoin is already live. You can already go and buy Evergrow coin on Indicoin. And they're still working with anywhere from six to 11 exchanges, I think is what they mentioned. They didn't mention the 11 this time, but they mentioned that last time. And they've signed essentially two exchanges at this point. And those exchanges have said three to five days. Now, here's the disclaimer. And I, I've referenced this multiple times because it's one of, the, one of the more recent examples. Shiba did the same thing with Coinbase. Coinbase took the better part of two months to list. So just because they say three to five days, they're the third party. They dictate when things get listed, not Evergrow, not the team at Evergrow. 
So if it takes longer than three to five days, don't blame Evergrow because they've already done what they need to do. It's currently on the exchanges and we don't know which ones. As soon as they are ready to launch, I'm sure we'll find out. But, and I use the example of Coinbase. They were supposed to launch. They released a message saying they were going to launch. And then they came back with another message saying technical delays. And then it was a month and a half before anything happened. So just have realistic expectations of when these exchanges are going to list Evergrow. It might be three to five days. It might be tomorrow. It might be two months from now. That's just how these things kind of work, especially when you're dealing with third parties. Now, some of these exchanges are also going to have the ability to stake. That was one of the questions somebody asked in the chat this morning as well. I don't know which ones, and I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but while they're working some of this tokenomics stuff out, the exchanges said, well, we can give you the tokenomics essentially through staking. And that hadn't occurred to them. So I don't know which ones, but some of the exchanges aren't going to have the same tokenomics. So I know that's been one of the things that we've been holding off for and, and waiting for is to make sure that everybody has a fair shake at getting the rewards. And because this is the exact same thing that happened with SafeMoon is they've got a whole bunch of exchanges that bought a whole bunch of tokens and then just listed it themselves and bypassed SafeMoon entirely. So they set up essentially their own little ecosystem on their exchange for that token. And it, the market prices are still linked, so it still works all the same. But that isn't necessarily what we're saying here with the tokenomics for Evergrow coin. What they're saying is, is that, there, yes, there's going to be some exchanges out there that don't contribute to rewards and they don't receive rewards. So they're completely cut off and excluded from the ecosystem. But this is going to make it really hard to figure out the volume equation because we won't know necessarily what portion of the volume was on that exchange. Right. So you might notice that the volume's higher than and your rewards that you should be getting will be a little bit lower than what you should have gotten. You might start to see a little bit more of that, depending on how the volume works on those exchanges. That's that's usually how that works out. And I have the same thing with SafeMoon, where the calculation says you should get this amount, but the reality is, is that you're going to get a little bit lower than that. That's unavoidable, and that's why they were trying to avoid segmenting the exchanges away from the tokenomics that they're doing. Now, there is some plus to this, because the day traders are going to benefit from the exchanges because they're not going to be doing those fees, which is also going to drive up volume and it's going to get the attention of more investors. So there's kind of a plus and minus to the entire situation. It's always better that we have more holders, even if they're not necessarily contributing to the rewards because it's getting it broadcast to more people. More people are becoming aware of Evergrow coin and potentially the ones that are on the exchanges, they can buy it there and still sell it, send it over to a wallet that does support rewards and then start collecting them. If they do that, they'll pay that 14% transfer fee just like everybody else. So there's, I think my preference would have been that the tokenomics were in place on all the exchanges from Go, but there is some benefit to the traders having access to it because that's always been one of my concerns with some of these high fee tokens is what about the traders? I just don't know that they're going to see the value in buying this because they, they're looking for quick turn revenue where they can buy and sell things for slight profit increases, sometimes massive profit increases. I'm not sure that they're interested in buying something that they got away for 28%. So kind of the last thing on the exchanges. Now, one of the things that Sam also mentioned was that this is just a interim temporary solution. Now you gotta remember, most of these exchanges weren't built with rewards in mind. So this is gonna take them some time to modify their technology to allow for rewards organically on their exchange. And BitMart's a great example, right? So BitMart figured out a way to do monthly SafeMoon deposits. So every month around the 12th, they would give everybody the rewards. That was their solution because their exchange wasn't built for tokenomics. All of the exchanges have that particular problem. Very few of them are organically built to support rewards. So they got to modify their infrastructure. So that's, and we've mentioned this, I think we've been talking about this for weeks now on that's really the issue is we're talking about them modifying their software. My guess is that they came back and said, hey, this is probably going to take us longer than three to five days. We're, this is an interim solution is, hey, we'll, we'll put it on there. We'll continue to work the, the upgrade so that we can support tokenomics fully. But in the meantime, at least we're getting people to buy Evergo coin on the exchange. That's what it sounds like probably happened. So that I know we want to get that 8% back in rewards and we are, but we're also building up that holder base 
in the short term and getting more exposure to the Evergrow coin. So there's a plus in here as well. Am I wishing that they could have got the tokenomics right off the bat? Absolutely. That's where we're confronted with reality. Sometimes things don't necessarily work that smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> but I trust the team to continue to work with these exchanges and keep pushing to try to get the tokenomics where it's best for the entire community. But at least right now, we're still going to be building up those holders. So one thing I, I think that the team should probably consider is including a list of which exchanges include tokenomics and which ones don't. Because a prospective investor, if they're looking for the 14% rewards and they go to an exchange that doesn't offer tokenomics, it's probably going to be a little upset. At least I would be. They also, if they're on their exchange and they just happen to see Evergrow coin, they've heard it in the news, they buy into it, and then they realize they're not getting these massive rewards. They're probably going to go to the website to try to figure out why. And having that list there will serve two purposes. The investor that's looking to learn more information before they invest and the investor that is already invested on an exchange that doesn't have tokenomics and is trying to figure out why they're not getting tokenomics. They're probably going to be a little frustrated with their exchange. But at least the information will be there and ready for them to see it. Again, I, I can't harp on this enough. The more updated the website is, the more information they provide to potential investors, the more likely people are to invest. So putting the information on the website, especially when it comes to some of these fees, is going to help. If you're a content creator, that's relevant information. Hey, I'm not going to get in. There's no commissions if I accept Evergo coin. I mean, that's, that's huge. Now, if they're looking for immediate cash, maybe that's not going to work for them, especially since it's still kind of complicated to get Evercoin coin turned back into fiat. But it depends on that content creator's situation. Now, one thing did kind of stick out with me, and, and it's not necessarily something that's intuitive to everybody. Sam actually made a point of emphasizing it because I think he realized not everybody's grasping exactly how big this is with content creators. Now, let's assume that you get a content creator that has a million followers and they start using the Evergrow platform or creator specifically to put their content out there. More than likely, those million followers are gonna go buy Evergrow coin. Not, not, a, not a guarantee, there's gonna be other options to tip their, their content creator or to do different things besides just the Evergrow coin, but even if 10% go buy Evergrow, that's more volume. That's more buyback and burn. That's more of everything that we're looking for as far as the tokenomics from those content creators, which is just pluses for all of us long term. One other thing that they provided an update on is the ability to buy Evergrow coin directly. Now, the I'm sure you've all been to the website and you've got the buy button for buy BNB, which doesn't work in the US. It sounds like they've already signed a contract the for somebody that will allow you to buy from that button here in the US and everywhere. Now, it wasn't entirely clear if it's going to be a buy button that allows you to buy directly Evergrow coin or at least just buy BNB. That way you're doing it from the website and it's fairly easy. And some of the things that were mentioned were Simplex and MoonPay. And as far as I'm aware, neither one of those currently allow you to buy Evergrow coin directly. But again, they've indicated there's five that they're looking at potentially signing contracts with that would allow for that capability. And there's also discussions of being able to do it straight from your wallet to be able to buy Evergo coin. So a lot of great updates coming. There's, they didn't provide any specific dates and they're and rightly so if they provide a date and they miss it, especially for stuff that's relying on third parties, the community is going to be the one that goes crazy. So it's better that they just say, this is what we're working on. And we have to trust that they're going to get it done. And so far, they've accomplished what they've said they're going to get done. So there's no reason for us not to trust them with the long-term success of this project. They're tied to its success just like we are. So a quick price update. Now, this is today's chart. And right around here is when we started talking about exchanges. So we had some sell-off, which is expected. Because there's a lot of people that were holding on for those rewards and then they said, well, I'm not going to get the returns that they wanted and they wanted to realize their profits they've already got. Probably expecting a lot of people to do the same thing. Not a lot of people are. The project is still good. The fundamentals for their project have not changed. And this is why I keep saying, go back to the fundamentals. What has changed? Has anything changed about the fundamentals for the project? If you are in for the long term, if you are looking for the long term payoff of the rewards as well as just the overall increase in the project, then nothing has changed. 
these people here lost faith. They either couldn't remember the fundamentals, they didn't understand the fundamentals to begin with, or they were just day traders that were looking for a quick profit and realized maybe they can't get it with this project, so they're gonna put their money someplace else. And, and that's the benefit of it being on exchanges is those people that are looking for the quick profit will have a good way to do that because this token's probably gonna see ups and downs, so it's gonna be a good project for day traders as well, as long as they don't have that 14% fee each time. So there's, again, there's a lot of benefits to this. I'm just sad that these guys had to jump off, but guess what? I'll enjoy their rewards. I can't wait to see the rewards tomorrow when it hits my wallet. There's a plus to it. This is probably just a couple whales that sold off thinking there's gonna be a whole bunch of other people selling off and they wanted to get ahead of it as soon as they heard the information. They're a loss, we're still in it. And this presented a great opportunity to buy if anybody was bought down here. It looks like some people took advantage and bought the dip. Cause that's a pretty good dip right there let's let's uh, zoom out a little bit here so you can see that was a decent dip it's nowhere near as good as this one over here but it's still not too bad but again nothing changed remember the fundamentals and if you can't remember go watch the fundamental video here the fundamentals for the project are still good now if they had said hey we're going to take away all the eight percent rewards then i would say yeah it's probably a good time to go sell because that's something that was a fundamental aspect of the project that a lot of people wanted or if they said, hey, we can't do content creation anymore, we're gonna get rid of that. Well, that's a hit to the fundamentals. Them having a couple of exchanges that aren't gonna to adhere to a tokenomics initially is not a hit to the fundamentals. And it is not something that's gonna impact the long-term success of this project. That's just my point of view. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. That's just how I see it. I don't sell at the first sign of issues. And I don't even call this an issue. The, the term for that is paper hands. So these people over here, have paper hands. They don't have diamond hands. Diamond hands, they take a second to think about it, interpret the information and realize nothing changed and continue to hold. That's all I wanted to cover for today is a quick recap. Unfortunately, it went a little longer, so it's not so quick, but I did want to explain this uh, more in depth. Until next time, stay strong with those diamond hands. Good to newbie here to tell you how you can get $2,340 in free stocks. All the links I use in this video are in the description. Sign up for Webull and get two free stocks valued up to $2,300. Your first stock is free automatically. Deposit any amount and you get your second stock. Deposit one penny and you get your second stock. Total value could be up to $2,300. Generally $5 per stock is what you get. Next we have block fee. Get $10 in Bitcoin just for signing up. A read the fine print. I've got a rewards account. You'll get $40 in Bitcoin as will I. So you know exactly what I'm going to get and what you're going to get. You do need to deposit $100 to get your $40 in Bitcoin. That's the overview of how to get $2,340 just by signing up for accounts.